Hey man, welcome back to Man Time and part two of our Steel 036 Barn Find Revival. Uh, in this episode, we are going to be going through and doing a full service on this. Um, some of the things like the air filter, you can see there all the flocking has gone on it. We're also going to be looking it over for damage. We're going to rebuild the carb and just basic tune up and maintenance for it. Uh, it's been about a week and uh, got my fuel line in. I want to make sure to change that fuel filter, so let's get started. Welcome to man time. Alright, so one of the first things you want to do before you start tearing into everything like this is get it all blown out. So I've taken uh, compressed air, blown the whole thing out. And now I want to check for compression. I want to get baseline data. Oh, look at there, CJ7. Yeah, the problem with these plugs, though, is this piece right here, right? The little end piece that screws on. I think I'm going to go ahead and replace this one out. Um, looks like it was running, and you can tell from the plug here a lot, too, right? We want to be looking at that plug. We can see there it is a uh, light brown and... Super clean burning actually. I mean this looks like Either a new plug or something, but you can see there it was probably running a little lean and that uh, Pinched fuel line inside the tank could have been the reason there and could have been the reason why it was parked But let's uh, let's get a compression test here and see what we are working with Again, it feels super stout as far as the compression, but let's just get a reading on it. Now, one other thing um, I'm noticing here, and I want to get down here and see if I can see the manufacturer on this uh, cylinder. It looks like it looks like a uh, aftermarket. It looks like a farmer tech almost. Let's. Uh, uh, okay, we're right there just uh, just right around 150 so good compression um, shouldn't have to worry about that so we'll call that good uh, next thing I want to do is get the carb and this bit off the end of it here because I think that is going to be critical in changing out the fuel line but while I'm in there I definitely want to remember to change out the fuel line so We'll focus on this area right here. We also want to be looking at our uh, vacuum line, making sure that it doesn't have any leaks, uh, tears, rips. And same with our boot while we're in here. But I'm going to put this spark plug back. In the meantime, uh, some of the tools you're going to need for this, you're going to need a T27 mainly. And just so has it, uh, Harbor Freight has a kit uh, with a you know, T27 in it. If you want to get some of the long shank bits for this one, you're going to be paying for them. I, uh, I looked, like on Amazon, um, and it was 50 bucks for like the cheapest one, you know, for the long regular shank or whatever. So, you're going to need this. Uh, and then just some other standard tools. Flathead. Um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how much more we need once we get into it here, but shouldn't be too much else. Okay, uh, let's start taking this top end apart. All right, so flathead got that filter off of there, and then we've got some standard carburetor uh, stuff going on here with some 8 millimeter nuts. Um, and then we've got, oh geez, well, that's, a, <laughs> that's an interesting choke lever. There, you can just roll it out of the way. Pretty convenient. Yeah, you really want to make sure to change the, the fuel filters out on these. I got burned on two of the last saws that I was working on. And a matter of fact, the, uh, the Wolf, the 61272, um, I even changed the fuel filter. And then the fuel filter ended up clogging, I guess because I had some stuff in the tank that ran in there. And, well, here's the, here's the fuel filter right here. Um, one of these ceramic ones. And it's, it's impossible to tell if it's clogged or not. It looks white, it looks clean, it looks brand new, and it wasn't. Um, same thing happened on that 338 XPT, which I plan on uh, 
given a second chance at life here fairly shortly. Okay, so there's our carb. We've got a Zama. Uh, the carb kit called out for this one is going to be... Jeez. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll find the number. Um, I'll find the number, but it just says carb kit. So I just... I guess any carb kit will just work for this one. Before I get too much further, I just want to go ahead and change this out and make sure there's no question whether or not it's a new line in there. Now, looking at the new line, um, see, it's got the top of it here. It looks like I should just be able to pull it up through there. But, I mean, this is going to be extremely difficult to get down this little hole. Let's see if that is the case or not. Oh, yep, there we go. Yeah, look at this. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. It's so... It's so gone. Yeah, this is what I was seeing inside. It's like... It's so gone. Oh, I guess that's the filter. Yeah, look at how... Look at how chewed up... Oh, yeah, there was... Well, that might have been me just then, but... That would definitely be part of our problem there, wouldn't it? Okay. So this is in an attempt to get, like, the hardest thing out of the way first, I guess. Um, I like to do that. And just so I never have to worry about fuel filters anymore, I got this bag of, like, 10 off of eBay for 20 bucks or something. And what's really cool, like, I thought, you know... If, if you're just seeing this, you'd be like, oh, well, those are kind of junky. They're, um, they look heavy or they look cheap or, or whatever. This is actually the original Walbro designed chainsaw um, filter that was in that original steel. Uh, so I'm thinking that's a pretty good filter. There we go. But on the other hand, I really like this design oh this is still a steel look at there cool but yeah you really don't want to get burned you know on a really nice saw because of a fuel line or a fuel filter and i just kind of got well i i'm i'm gun shy now right it's, it's burned me burned me a couple times um see and that was like that was hard to blow through, right? So this could have been part of the problem too. Now I can blow this out with brake clean and it might get a little bit better, but, so here's this one. Ugh, it's hard to blow through. Let's try one of the new ones. Yeah, easy to blow through. That's the one I'm gonna use. So, let's see if we can get this in here without causing too much heartache here. God. Yeah, this is the worst part. All right, so I need Vaseline. I need to prepare for a full lube job. And we'll just do it, right? I mean, you know, some people are like gluttons for punishment. I guess I'm one of those, but other people like to watch people be punished. So for those of you out there that like to watch people be punished. Uh, this is for you. So I can tell you right now how this is going to go. Not good. Okay, I know I had one of these around here. This is going to be the easiest way. Just kind of pinch it and jam it. Okay, that, okay, the ribs, the ribs are there to help you push it through. <laughs> that is a smart design. Okay, I found the way to, to do this here. It's with a needle nose and just pushing it rib by rib. And then once you get down this far, I think you can just, uh, well, I don't want to go jamming it through there. All right, give her some lube. 
Yep. Okay, now. A little flathead maybe? Alright, so when you're doing this with a with a flathead, you want to get the side that's hardest to start first. And then work your way around to the sides that you can see and are easier to get. <sighs> oh, it's just gonna be a pain. There we go. Got it. That's it. Just keep mashing it down in there. Eventually it'll seed its way in there. Okay, so that is done. See now for the tricky part. Now we're playing operation. Right now we've got to get our fuel filter on the end of it here. Oh, maybe not so bad. It looked short, and that's why I say that, but look at what I got here. Let me grab a hold of this old girl. There it is. Got it. Okay, a little luby on there. Beautiful. That's it. Perfect. I know this might be repetitive for some of you out there. But when I was first starting out, I had no idea how to rebuild a carb. So let's rebuild a carb like I'm doing it for past me. And uh, hopefully he learns something from this. Makes his life a little bit easier. Okay. So first thing here, you've got a screen right down there. Now this was the side with that single bolt right through the middle. And... This does not look bad. Man, it looks like the previous owner might have done this uh, in an attempt to, you know, fix his fueling problem, which may have even burned up the cylinder and caused for a, uh, caused for the new jug to be on there. But I'm going to blow this out, and then we'll get this screen out of there. To get this screen out, all you have to do is reach down there with a little... screwdriver like that. Seat is working. Blow through the orifices and then completely blow it out with air. Alright, keep your razor blade handy here. Gonna need that to get all these gaskets off of there. See this gasket, gaskets don't come off that easy. So I'm thinking this was a newish kit on here and uh, somebody was trying to fix their fueling issues go around it with like your fingernail or screwdriver and get all the remaining gasket off of there and always use your filter in your kit here it's going to come with a uh, with a filter and keep your parts separated like that so all right, let's just start with our filter. Oh, don't lose your little spring. Yeah, these filters are just... I, I sometimes don't do this just because it's so hard to get these stupid things lined up. They get started in their crooked, and then you try to straighten them out, and they get more crooked. And as I say that, I get that one in there perfect, but like never happens right yeah so there's our new filter in there okay and then just match up uh, gasket and we can just put it right on the top here gonna be the easiest way to get it lined up and then same with this one it's gonna line up on the top so you've got these orifices going on inside of there that match perfectly up with that gasket and then just 
Same on here, as you go to set it down, you've got those line-up dowels that are going to help you line it up in there. So that's the pumping side with those uh, those flappers. So that's it's kind of the valving side. This is kind of more the pumping side down here, but either way. And you saw that the uh, it's this piece, then that uh, gasket piece, and then that piece with the flaps. The thinner the thinner piece goes against here. Now in here is where we have, this is what I like to call the magic, because this is where you've got your diaphragm, um, you've got your, uh, yeah, basically the diaphragm, the needle, the seat, everything in here is what um, really lets that fuel through and everything else. Metering, lever, I guess is what it's called, so all that good stuff. Okay. Yeah, just another quality Zama carb here. Now this part here is where it gets interesting, right? Because you've got this little... <clears throat> yeah, that was Loctited in there. Yeah, it definitely looks like somebody's been into this because... Um, and that looks perfect. Sometimes there'll be like a ridge around there, and that can be a sign that you have not a good sealing surface. But this this looks stock in here, this uh, sealant. You want to check your seat, look down in there, make sure there's no debris, anything in there. Again, blow it out. All right, so we'll go back together the way we came apart here. We'll start with our needle, nice and rubbery. And we'll go with, let's see here. All right, so you've got your metering lever here. You've got a spring underneath. So we'll put that spring in, and then we'll try to set this down on it. Ooh. Nice breeze. Again, you really just want to change this stuff out. You've got the kit. It comes with all this stuff. Okay, now. Now we need to set our metering lever. And one way you can do it is just to lay something flat across here and check it like that. Um, they're all going to be a little bit different. And there is some metering tools. And the, let's see, this is a C3A um, S1928P. Now I have the Zama metering. Let me just get it. All right, so here is our Zama metering tool. And you can see on there it's got some letters on either side of it there, telling you like what kind of carb equals what distance and all that. So right there you can see C3A, right? So C3A, that's what this is. So it's just, it's just a flat line. And that's, I mean, a bunch of them are like that, right? So you just take it and go across there, just like I was doing with the screwdriver. But that's just a good check to see where it's supposed to be at. The other way you can do it, which is what I normally do, Right, so now we know it's set where it's supposed to be, but if you push down on this, this should pop up, and when you release it, this should go all the way down. Right, so now I'm pushing on that, it's all the way down. When I push it down, it lifts it up. So it's working perfect. There we go. Alright, 
next is our gasket, right? Now well, they've got the diaphragm, so it's, uh, yeah, so gasket goes first on here. And it's got those lineup dowels, so again, good. Now if you aren't for sure, or you think it's put together wrong, um, quick go on the net and uh, check out to see um, what the correct order is. Usually they'll have an exploded diagram and you can check that out pretty quick. And let's see here. Looks like this one goes like that. Yeah. Okay, so this one, let's see here. Looks like this one was installed, it's installed correctly. I think that's right. All right, so here we go. Here's the bottom half of it, right? You've got gasket, you've got that with the metal piece facing toward the carb, and then that. So that's the right way to do it. Is that how I said to do it? Yeah, that's how it goes. Good to check though, right? I don't want to be giving you guys the wrong information. Okay, uh, that is it. I'm going to get it buttoned up here. And I think that's basically our, our tune-up. One of the other things I want to do here before we get too far down the line, I can actually take a direct look inside my bottom end here. And also this piston. This piston has a little mark on it on this this side. Still has machining marks on it though. And the ring is good and oiled and free. Now I can look at inside the cylinder here. Um, see there's some light scoring on this front corner here. And nothing on this side, so just over here a little bit. Not uh, not too bad. Carbon on the top of the piston, of course. Carbon on the top of the jug. Man, I don't know. In the comments there, if you would, if you've seen like this gray colored metal on one of these. And this says made in the USA, right? Made in the USA. I think this was before the standards where you had to actually have so much of the components made in the USA. Back in the... Um, what was it there? I think the mid-90s, maybe early 90s, like Bush Sr., Gulf War, like it was like buy you Made in USA, and all the companies went to Made in USA. So I'm thinking this is a 90s saw. Um, I, I think back then they didn't have to have the stringent kind of like you have to have so much components actually manufactured in the USA like they do now because you've got the Made in Hong Kong you know, carb, and if this is a made in USA cylinder, I would love to know where it was cast at, because that is just cool. Uh, clean off your mating surface right around here, where your spark plug is going to mate up. You don't want any of that dirt or anything. Uh, holding up that seal. And see this NGK, so I went with an NGK uh, BPMR7A, I think that's what it calls out for. This has got that uh, end cap on it that's not unscrewable so I think we're gonna be good there so what do we know we've got spark we got good compression now we've got a rebuilt carb we've got a good uh, fuel delivery in that we have a new fuel line and a new fuel filter and then again we can blow through and we know it works uh, I did go with a cheapo um, air filter so, you know, this is what it is. Uh, trying to find one of these at your steel dealer or on eBay is pretty tough. So, we'll go with that. Looks to be the same. Anyways, we'll get this back together, see how it goes. All right, let's just go through this process because there's like a lot of stuff kind of going on here, right? So, on this one, you can see here, this sits down here like this. It's got high-low idle adjustments, right? So this goes this way. Um, that's going to go there. And then this 
hooked in with the throttle open, I believe. There we go. Make sure to get your fuel line down and out from behind there. Let's just get that hooked up while it's in our teeth here. It's always good to have, you know, a little bit of a guide when you're doing this right and not just have skips or stuff to where you're kind of left asking questions at the end of it. So this here goes there. How the heck does this thing work? See, this is the type of stuff. You get this far, and if I hadn't showed you that, then now you're stuck trying to figure it out. But Let's see, I just rolled it forward like that the first time. Alright, so here's run. This should be choke. So when it chokes, it should push that like that, right? So why isn't it doing that? Hmm. Is there a piece of missing here? Feels like it should rotate up. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's half throttle. And now it's choked. So it sets half throttle and then unchokes. Okay, got it figured out. <laughs> Good stuff to know, though. I mean, if you're paying attention as you're putting it back together, you're going to realize, oh crap, this thing that's supposed to work isn't working. But, a little clever deduction like that. Get it figured out. One thing I don't like about this is, like, the top cover sits down on here. And then, yeah, then the spark plug goes in. It's just kind of weird. I mean... Yeah, the, the spark plug sits through here, so you have to take this off in order to get it, you know. There you go. Yeah, and this thing is just kind of dangling in the wind, you know. Anyhow, it's lightweight. It's uh, It seems like it's going to be a pretty good saw, so we'll give it the benefit of the doubt negative points for top cover alignment. It's got alignment pins. I mean, it's seated in the alignment pins. It's it's in there. Does that help hold it in place? I mean, what's going on? Where is this supposed to go? Let's go down here. Is that, is that right? It doesn't look like it. Maybe. Maybe it is. Okay. I was... Wrong, that does go down there. That's hooked up. This is solid-ish. Anyways, it's lightweight. I think it's going to do pretty good. All right, a little Loctite on there. Never hurt anybody. A little after-the-fact Loctite. All right, I won't tell anybody. Uh, see here? See, now you're going to need some special thing. See, this is why you keep the old filter. The old filter has the good nuts that you can get off with a normal size screwdriver rather than these reamed out things here. I think I'm going to go back with the original nuts on here. Alright, so to get these out, I just jammed down and pulled up. There we go. Good to me. Put this back together. Make sure it's snapped around all the way. Put it back on here. The last thing is to get these tightened up. See how much easier that is with having that just a small hole there? Much rather have that on there. So much easier in the field to get that off of there when you're hot, sweaty and uh, tired from the day than trying to get your scrunch because all you're going to have is your scrunch, right? 
and you can just stick that in there and use it like a screwdriver, but here, well, I guess that isn't really proving my point, but that's a worse design. I think that's it. Let's put some gas in it. So for the carb settings, looks like we've got high, low, um, both one turn out. So we'll start there. Turn them all the way in. Okay, there's half and one. And this side is going to be our high. Half and one. Yeah, it was kind of spitting gas back at me there. So we'll start there with the factory. So, yeah, you can see it's got gas spitting all over the place. We'll start there. See how it goes. I'm really curious if there was a USA cylinder manufacturer that we couldn't be getting our stuff from though, huh? Right? Alright, trying it with uh, one and one. Last thing I need to do here is convert it over from uh, 325.8. So this has a 325.8 on it. I didn't know that, um, but I knew it had a 325 on it. I want to convert this over to a 3.8.7. Uh, so I went down to my local steel Husqvarna dealer, got a new 3.8.7 sprocket because I didn't have one this size. This is a smaller opening. I had some spare Husqvarna ones. Uh, let's just show you here. So here's a um, yeah so here's one for one of my Huskies 387 and you can see how much bigger it is right that whole size it's just it's not the same type of thing going on there. So you have to get the steel ones I guess that's gonna be different this hub and then while we're in here we can check for wear and check our clutch springs uh, yeah those seem okay it's hard to tell you know without without the saw running if it's gonna be good or not and then I just take some regular grease uh, grease up this bearing get that nice and lubed up And there's a notch in here. You've got an oiler, and you've got to you've got to indicate that oiler, and then uh, have that keyed in there. If you don't, it doesn't quite sit right on there. See there, it slipped in a little bit. That's where we want to be. All right, three eight seven. We've got everything inspected. Let's see how it's going to run here. So, I've got this one off of my 031. Uh, it does actually fit on here. It's got that same, you know, wider steel pattern on it there. And then I also grabbed the chain off of it since I'm not using that one. So we'll get this on here and then we'll try to fire it up and then we may need to tune some more to get it to idle to where the chain's not spinning, but hopefully it's set pretty close. All right, we got our chain tensioned up the way that I like it. Nice and smooth, rolls over easy. Still good and sharp. This will be a good comparison. This saw is the same CCs uh, as the 261 that I was using to test it against in the first one. But so this one had the 325.8, 8 
and the other one had a, a 387. So now they're set up both 387, both uh, 61 cc's, uh, 48 millimeter bore, 34 millimeter stroke. So basically the exact same displacement on them. This one's going to have the two ring piston, the other one's going to have the single ring, and then it has that little additional hole in the muffler. But this looks pretty free flowing. Let's uh, Let's see how we're doing here, and then do another test up against that 261. All right, let's see how she restarts here. She's pretty cold. You may want to give it some choke. One other thing you want to do, once you get it tuned in like that, uh, you want to take your screwdriver, turn it all the way in till it stops, and turn it all the way out. Um, or count the turns as you're turning it in, so you've got a baseline settings uh, for your machine. So I was just about one and an eighth out on both high and low for you know so I'm just right there almost at factory settings so we'll just see how it goes here try to start it cold It's idling basically as low as I want it to idle, maybe even too low. And the chain's still spinning. And even though we looked at that clutch and it looked like the springs were okay, I, I don't think the springs are okay. So I'm going to go and order some springs for it. Uh, so that way, you know, I, I know for sure that the clutch, and I'm probably even going to do a new hub because it had a little bit of wear in there. I'm going to order those new parts for this, and maybe there's some aftermarket stuff that won't be too bad. but. Let's put this back up against the 261 in the wood and see what's happening with them. Go straight to the steel. pretty equal um, man I actually feel like the 261 
uh, not by a large margin, but definitely beat this out. So I'm going to leave that one stock and I'm going to port this one. And we're going to go in the next episode on to phase three with this one, where we're going to be porting it, probably doing a pop-up piston, uh, new rings, caber rings, and, uh, and a full port job, and maybe a muffler mod, and just take it all the way and see what kind of power we can get out of this. I'm also going to order some clutch springs. We'll get that sorted out, but uh, subscribe and uh, join me for my next video where we're going to take this on to stage three. Thanks for joining me today on Man Time. Get out there. Have you some man time too.